Welcome to the Talos Principle Public Test. This is currently on Steam. They mention here it's a free version available for a limited time. Now we're here representative of the final game. And the key thing is the limited time thing. So that's why I decided to go ahead and get this to give it a shot. Um, as for the game, it's a first person puzzle game. So think something along the lines of Portal, for example. It comes out in December, so there's still some time to think about getting it. The thing costs like $40 if you want it. Little steep, yes, but we'll have to see if the content is worthwhile. There is supposed to be multiple routes, multiple endings, things along those lines, which are what caught my interest. But anyway, let's begin the test. As you can see with the Restore Backup, I've already played this, so I know where everything is. I know the solutions for the most part. There are a couple things that may give me a little trouble, like these block puzzles. And one thing I can talk about as I go for the first of the six stars is that um, there is a companion game to the Talos Principle called Sigils of Elohim, I believe. It's something along those lines. And it's basically a series of puzzles that use those Tetris pieces that you see in the top left corner to solve. By solving certain ones, or all of them in a row, you get an unlock in the final game. I may end up going for Sigils of Elohim sometime with Talos comes out and I do want to pick it up and play it. But right there with the first star, I'll explain those in a moment once I get to those. The main thing is I have to see what my schedule is like in December to know whether or not I have time to play all of these, see what all is coming out, things along those lines. Um, here's the second star underneath the bridge. And before we actually tackle the puzzles, I have to go grab something. So in this demo version, there are advertised four puzzles to do, but there's actually five if you get all six stars. And over here you get a data log. I'm going to go quiet as this narrates, so hold on a second. How do you solve a problem that extends beyond your own lifespan? That question may be the essence of civilization, and the only answer I can find is to initiate a process to create an environment which the solution will occur independently of yourself, but that requires a difficult sacrifice. Letting go of your desire to bear witness, to exist at the center of the cosmos, to participate in the project of civilization, is to accept death. <sighs> Alex, you're such a fun person. Anyway, what they're getting at is actually part of the myth of Talos. I don't actually know a lot about it. It's a Greek myth, I believe, about an artificially created human. And that's pretty much the whole premise. You are playing as a robot. If you look in the bottom right corner, you'll see my robotic hand. So if you're expecting a human, you're in for a bit of a surprise. And there's what I was looking for. So you'll notice a star here. This is probably the hardest one to get in the game. And in order to get it, you have to line up an angle just right here. So let's drop this here. Okay. Now we can begin tackling the puzzles. So there are six stars, as I said. Gain all six unlocks the fifth puzzle. Um, three of them are in the puzzle rooms. I believe there's one in each one, and then there's a hidden one for you to get. If you notice in the top left corner with the Tetris pieces, there are four that are filled in, three that are blank. And right here, I'll go into the back end of that in a second, here's a terminal you can interact with. I'm not bothering with it. You can read some documents. They don't really seem to matter, at least in terms of the demo. So, uh, I'm not bothering, but the end result is just that you get locked out. Here's the uh, first puzzle room, the easy level one for that piece. You are given two jammers. So the way you want to tackle this one is you want to use one jammer to open the door, the other one to keep it open, and just keep staggering these until you get all the way through. And there is a missable star here, so... Hopefully you guys don't miss it. I don't know if you can actually come back to get this one, but here's the Tetris piece. You'll notice here's a platform in the corner in the blind Behold, spot. child, you are risen from the dust, and you walk in my garden. Hear now my voice, and know that I am your maker. 
and I am called Elohim. Seek me in my temple, if you are worthy. So I'm skipping to the hard one because there are two stars that you have to mess with in the medium room. For this one, you have to do the same thing, except we're using a connector now instead of a jammer. So you have to link what you want, then we use the jammer to keep it open, and they showed you that you can use the windows to bypass this, which is actually key to getting through this room as well as getting a star. So you just choose what you want to link, opens the door, you move the jammer to keep it open, and you're just going to keep messing around like this. If you're wondering about those purple doors, those make it so that you can't actually take anything in or out of the room. Now we need to actually access the blue light, and in order to do so we have to do a puzzle here. And I kinda wish we were earlier when I actually still remembered this. Um, no, that's not gonna work. This one? No. Um, that won't work. There we go. So now that the blue light is through, this will open. We can use the jammer now to keep this open. Now we need to move the connector one more time. And there we go. So you have to grab the jammer if you want the final star here. You can notice it's right behind that blue door. It's probably the easiest one to get. Once you get this, the gate will open. You can just walk out. Anyway, that's star number four. We can leave this room and go to the medium puzzle room, which is more of a headache. Two colors, two doors. So the first thing you need to do is get your te uh, hexahedron and your connector. So I'm grabbing the hexahedron first. The next connector is right here. Now you need to link the blue, but the beams will cancel out if they touch one another. So you have to elevate this. And you actually have to make sure that they're in range of one another. So we'll set this on the block. That's going to open this. And now we have to get the final two stars. Beeping means that the room that we walked past earlier is now open since we have all the sigils, but there's still a little more to do. So we're going to toss this here. We can hop up on the wall. We can hop over into this area, and there's the star for the medium room. But now is the hard part. So the marker that I used last time was this. The corner of the grass there. If you go over here, let's link these ahead of time just to make it simple. And now you need to set this on the ground. So yeah, the trees are hiding a secret from you. Now we have to take the long way around once again, so bear with me for a moment. These worlds, and we within them, are made of words. Hidden words, invisible to you, yet part of all things. We are... a story. Your actions give life to the story, and the story gives meaning to your life. I forgot to mention when you interact with the computer, the voice that's narrating Elohim actually calls it the Deceiver. May play a role in the storyline, but right here, where crap happens, any second now you'd expect Slender Man to jump out or something, but no, it's not the case. So I do have to walk at a snail's pace while that's going on, but once it ends, we are free to resume our normal pace and we can actually go back to where we started. I wasn't really intending for this to be a speed run, but I am flying through this a bit quickly. Don't worry, when we reach the next set of uh, those block puzzles, I'll be sure to slow down. Not voluntarily, though. Ugly statue. But now that we have 
all seven pieces. Let's see, we need this one here, this one here, this one here, this here, that right there, that one, and now we can enter the fourth room. Propylaeum. So first things first, we need the connector because this one has a pressure plate that you need to put something on to move around. We can get the fan, now we need to use that in place of the pressure plate. That will keep the door open so you can link the two. From here you can get the hexahedron. Now you can actually clear it with all the parts you have right now, but they give you another one in case you want to do it a proper way, I guess. So, we're gonna grab this. And we need to put the fan together in a moment. So, that's going to be taking the place of the fan. We need the fan over here. And now we need to put a block on here because if you have the connector on its own, it's just gonna fly off. And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna link everything. So, you can see that there doesn't appear to be a limit for the connector, but maybe there will be in the final product, or if there actually are enough things. Okay, now here comes the part where you are under the gun. You have a puzzle to solve in a limited time frame. In a moment, Elohim will start talking, and if he finishes talking, the demo ends. So you need to run over here to this open room. You'll notice the other rooms are all locked. Some of them have numbers. One is completely boarded off. And we have to use our stars to create the pieces. And we have to start this before he starts talking. Nope. You have come there we far, go. my child. Succeeding where so many before you failed. The room. And here's the secret area, the one they don't tell you about. The secret of recording. So you'll notice there are some new symbols there. First thing first, we need to put this, put it here. Yeah, I have to move that. So the neat thing here is you now can play with recording, so... We have five minutes to create a copy to do something, and I forgot to grab that. So that will show in the recording, but oh well. I'm going to link that to this, and I'm going to put it in a position where I can see it on the other side. Now I need to kill a few seconds seen on the pressure plate here to keep this door open. This is kind of like one of the puzzles you might see in something like um, Braid, for example where you actually have to play with time of it, and 30 seconds, that should be good enough. Okay, now we have our original copy. My copy is going to be running around here, you see. Crud. Well, I can do that part. And now I'm going to race around while he steps on the pressure plate for me. And you can get the white square. That also opens the door here because once the recording times out, you can see it counting down in the bottom left corner. That's pretty much it. As for what the white block is for, that I haven't been able to find out. I guess it's just like an Easter egg or something, but tell us for you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and start the final scene. We have to go back where we came from, and then we're done. So I will show this room, and once he starts talking, I'll go silent. You can see the door number five. Hmm. There's seven over there, and the boarded up one is over here. And there's also an elevator over by where we started, which you can't access, at least yet. You have come far, my child, succeeding where so many before you failed. The road before you is still long, and many gates remain closed. Do not falter, do not fear, and do not give in to temptation. And that's the end.
So if you're interested, you can check out the game. It comes out in December. Don't know whether or not I'll be covering it. That's yet to be decided. Anyway, if I can find out any information I missed or something like that, I'll go ahead and post that in the description. But I'm the Hero of Light. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.